AC Lock here, and here we are, the next class in the Certified Applicator Program, and we're talking about the science and technology of soft washing, the who, what, where, when, and why, when we're talking about this new industry you're looking into, soft washing. So let's jump in to the content. All right, so let's talk about that there is real science behind all of this. Number one, what in the heck is growing up there on that surface? Number two, why is it eating that surface? Why is it eating the roof? Can it be removed safely? What can actually kill it? Because we're talking about killing it or sanitizing it. How long will that treatment last? Can I warranty the treatment? Can I actually put a warranty on this treatment? You know, is this, is this something I can put a piece of paperwork on and build value into? Sure. And finally, the most important statement of them all, can I build a sustainable business doing this thing that we call soft washing? And I think I know the answer to that. That's yes. But I need to convince you of the fact that it's yes as well. All right, so let's talk about glowyocapsum Capsum Magma. This is the primary thing that's putting up all the stains on the roofs. So Glowio Capsum Magma is a species of cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are an ancient line of photosynthesizing bacteria that photolyze water, generating oxygen gas. Woo, that's, that's a mouthful. What does that mean? All right, so it's actually not an algae, okay? It's, it's more of a bacteria, and it kind of functions like a plant. It talks about photosynthesizing. The process of photosynthesis is where a plant takes in nutrients through its roots, up through the stem, out to its leaves, and through sunlight and carbon dioxide. It, it goes through the process of photosynthesis and creates energy for it to live off of. This bacteria does the same thing. It acts like a plant. And because it goes through photosynthesis, it actually has chloroplasts. And chloroplasts, is, if you go back to the full screen right here, you'll see on that picture there, it's actually green. Now, you'll say, but AC, the streaks on the roofs are black. Yes, they are, because it's a whole bunch of green all in one spot. It's just really, really, really dark green. If you take it, scrape a little bit off a roof, put it on a glass slide and put it underneath a magnifying glass, you'll see, in fact, it is actually green. Okay, so you must treat these types of bacteria and algae with an appropriate combination of chemicals to ensure that you get to that 100% kill ratio. You want to make sure you kill all the algae mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria. Now, we talked about earlier in these classes in the certified applicator, we talked about clean versus sanitized versus sterilized. In a case like this, where you're spraying a tile roof with a 3% solution, especially if you treat it efficiently with good technique, you can actually sterilize this roof to where you're not getting any regrowth on this roof. It'll take a brand new airborne spore traveling through the air, landing on the roof, starting a colony, starting a streak, starting a mat, going through the whole process from scratch, and you do get to that point when you do sterilize the roof, which means you've gotten a 100% kill ratio. Now, we don't advertise that. We advertise sanitize, but we do have the capability to sterilize when proper you know, amounts on the valves, proper strengths are adjusted, proper technique is used in agitation and rinsing you can sterilize a surface. So this cleaning will more closely resemble a pest control application than a pressure washing application. All right, so let's talk about total destruction here. Like a tree's roots breaking through concrete, these tiny plants feed on all types of roofing material like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Nature uses bacteria, algae, mold, mildew, and lichens to break down larger objects into smaller objects becoming parts of soil and dirt. This, basically, is the definition of decomposition. Under pressure. Water under pressure created this picture here. You recognize it? This is the Grand Canyon. This process that created this is called erosion. Water erosion, which is what was at use at the Grand Canyon, 
strips away materials that have been loosened by decomposition, algae, mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria, or by just simple aging. So water comes by and rinses that away. So why is that important? Okay, high pressure washing machines are destructive for cleaning roofs. Why would you expect to clean away a decomposer like algae, mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria, the things that are growing on this roof, with an eroder and not expect to cause damage to that surface? You see what I'm saying? If you take and you clean off decomposers with an eroder, you're actually magnifying the wear and the aging of that surface. So let's look at some algae decomposition here. This is a really, really old picture, way back from the Mallard days. I think this was back about 1996. I went out and drove out to a really old neighborhood here in Central Florida and found a really deteriorating, rotting roof. Okay, I love this picture here because when you look at this picture back here, you've got, you know, right here we've got Madonna, got Michael Strahan, Go back really far here, I got Lauren Bacall. Some of y'all might get that joke, some of y'all may not. <laughs> okay, but you can see these shingles are so affected by the algae mold, mildew, lichens, by it darkening the color of the roof, by the heat that creates, the breakdown of the asphalt and the fiberglass and the shingles, that the shingles actually start to curl and start to swell and you start to see gaps in those shingles. I mean, all of us would say this shingle roof is shot, right? I mean, it's gone. There's nothing you can do with this roof. Treating this roof will not help. Doesn't matter how much you polish this turd, it's a turd, right? Yeah, it's gone. But here's a wider picture out of that roof. And on the right-hand side of the picture, you can clearly see the damage of the shingles. You can clearly see the gaps in the shingles. You can clearly see the curling and the swelling of the shingles. But as you travel left across this roof, you'll see a clean area where it's a light gray, almost white shingle. There's something there keeping the shingles clean. And what that is, I'll just tell you here, is there's what's called step flashing between the shingle roof and the wall going up to the next portion of roof. They'll put in a little V-shaped piece of galvanized steel for step flashing so as water hits that roof and runs down that edge the water doesn't come in the house. Well as that galvanized steel, how they make galvanized steel is they adhere zinc crystals to steel and that galvanizes it. Zinc when it oxidizes creates zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is the active ingredient in athlete's foot powder. Athlete's foot is caused by fungus and algae. If zinc oxide kills fungus and algae on your feet, zinc oxide will kill fungus and algae on your roof. That's why that portion of roof is cleaner. But as I zoom in right now, as I take and I get closer there, you will see that the shingles that were kept clean right up next to that little silver strip there is where that step flashing is exposed you will see right there that the zinc oxide that has leached off of there and kept those shingles right there clean because the fungus couldn't grow there, the shingles look brand spanking new. Which proves that the algae mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria, fungus, viruses are growing on that roof attack the shingles. And if you only kept it clean, you would realize the full service value, the full life cycle of that roof, not a diminished life cycle by allowing it to get dirty. So decomposers like that break down their shingles, those shingles with their filament root system, the roots growing down in there, their hunger for the limestone filler in the shingles, the acids from their waste and the heat they create from roof darkening. So their root system, they're actually eating the building material, the limestone in the shingles, the acids from their waste, 
and the heat they create from darkening the roof. That's what destroys the roof. It's not purely an aesthetics problem. On the hardy siding, it's not purely an aesthetics problem. On the pavers, on the driveway, it's not purely an aesthetics problem. This stuff is really eating and destroying and decomposing the building substrates that it's growing on. So when you look at a roof up close, this is actually in Sarasota, Florida. We all know when you get a brand new shingle roof, they always bring more shingles than they needed because they don't know what they're going to run into. And they give you those extra shingles, you put them in your garage if you ever need to have a repair. So the shingle on the right was the roof that this company was cleaning. We got these pictures from a friend of ours. On the left was the shingle out of the garage. They took one out of the garage and sat it up on the roof in the same sunlight. The one on the left is a brand new shingle. Same age as the one on the right, just the one on the left was kept in the garage, sheltered. The one on the right was a 10-year-old roof in Florida here. This is in Sarasota, Florida. It not only was attacked by the Gloliocapsa magma, but also by fungus and lichens and bacteria and it has eroded the roof. It's really clear to see in this picture. So the above shingle has suffered from granular loss due to decomposition from bacterial and fungal growths. Okay, here lichens arrive in the final stages of decomposition. In the final stages of decomposition. Okay, so here is a close-up, a real, real, real close-up of this actual shingle. And you can see here where the limestone was, it's been eaten down and capped off. And you can see like the top of the limestone has been eaten away down to the level of the asphalt. And now you see lichens on there. You see those little pus balls on there, those orange little balls. Those are, those are fungus and all that's there. And this is part of the four stages of decomposition on a roof which we go into in our sales boot camp and some of our other curriculums that you guys will get to watch in the future. But this is the final stage here. It's not just gloliocapsa magma. It's not just algae and funguses. You, out, you now have mosses and lichens up there and mosses and lichens have a very, very aggressive root system. And now's when real, real destructions happening to the roof. Not only does this stuff des destroy the roof, but it costs you money in a lot of other areas too. And we're talking about roofs because it's really our top sell principle. You guys will find all over the world that eventually you'll realize roof cleaning is where the money is on this. We are going to do the exteriors, we're going to do windows, we're going to do driveways, we're going to do wood decks and wood fences and conservatories and all those types of things. But the bottom line is, is our real money getter the thing that we're going to get paid for because of the risk, because of the cost of the surface, because of the specialty of it, is the roofs. It's really the roofs. So when you look at some other reasons why this is destroying the roof and, and, and taking money from your wallet as a homeowner, you look at the scenario of a white car or a black car. So if you look at this picture here, okay, which car here is hotter? Is it the white car or the black car? Well, first of all, listen, hey, they're both hot. They're Mustangs. <laughs> I'm a Mustang fan. As a matter of fact, I just got done putting a, a Mustang 5.0 Coyote in my 1960 Ford pickup truck. So I've got right now a 1960 Ford pickup truck with the heart of a Mustang in it. But the point of this picture here is darker colors, black cars get hotter because they absorb heat from the sun and white cars, lighter colors, reflect heat from the sun, therefore staying cooler. Okay, so that's the reason why they make solar water systems solar water heaters, they make them black tubes because solar water heating systems are black to absorb heat more efficiently than any other color. Okay, that black pulls heat from the UV rays from the sun. It absorbs that heat and it makes the water hot. And this is actually documented science. 
So the Florida Solar Energy Commission was commissioned by the Roofing Council to do a study as to the relationship between cooling systems, your air conditioning system, how much electric it used, and the color or the type of roofing material you have on your home. So what they did is, is, is they're, they're trying to draw a parallel between that, that condensing unit inside the house, cooling the air, pumping it up into the ducts, traveling through the attic, picking up heat from the attic through radiation, changing the temperature, or influencing the temperature of that air before it gets poured out into whatever rooms the ducting goes around your home. And they're trying to see if different types of roofing material and different colors of roofing material influence how hot that attic gets on a home. And then what they did is they took a portable classroom building. Y'all have seen them at the schools when they have school overcrowding. They'll go and they'll just bring in some double wide trailer classroom type things. And they took the roof on that and they divided it up into 200 square foot sections. And one they put a light colored shingle and a dark colored shingle and a light colored metal and a dark colored metal and they put different types of roofing material on there. In each attic they put, and they segmented off the attics underneath them and they put a temperature sensor in every attic. And then they put a temperature sensor outside under a tree just to capture the outside ambient air temperature. And then over a 24 hour period of time they captured the temperature underneath the different colors and types of roofing material in the segmented attics through the sensor and they created this little line graph off to the side. And to make a long story short, you guys can freeze frame it and look at this more closely, but the hottest roof, the one that was almost 140 degrees at the height of the day, was a black shingle roof. Now it boggles my mind why anybody would want to intentionally put a black shingle roof on a house, but they did, and they do all over the place, okay? The coolest temperatured roof was a white barrel tile roof, and that's because it's white. It's also because it's barrel shaped, so it created little cells of insulation, little pockets of air between it and the top of the roof, so there was opportunity for cooling to happen. So it reflected the heat and also too insulated the roof some. And then they recorded the ambient air temperature. In this graph, you can see that a white tile roof was the absolute most efficient roof. But if you look at the ambient air temperature outside, which is the actual turquoise line on there, and right next to it's kind of a bright green line, you'll see the bright green line, which represents the white barrel tile roof. The attic was actually cooler through the first part of the day up until about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. The attic under the white barrel tile roof was cooler than the outside air temperature till about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Every other type of roofing material, it was warmer in the attic than it was outside. And then finally, about three o'clock, the white barrel tile roof, the attic gets hotter than it does outside because you start to cool off and the outside ambient air temperature started to go down. But they almost completely overlap or parallel each other, parallel each other, which I think is very interesting. So if you're wanting to put a roof on your house, and especially if you live in a warm climate like the Southeast United States, you might want to put a white barrel tile roof on your house because they were able to find that it was, it was literally a 40% savings in your electric bill, the difference between a black shingle roof and a white barrel tile. Now, as part of this study, they went ahead and took some pictures. And in this case, they took that portable classroom building and you can see the white metal roof on there, the black shingle roof, the red shingle roof, the black metal roof, the white barrel tile roof, all the different types of roofing material were up there. And down below it is a thermal photography image. Now, let me explain what this is. Blue is like ice, it's cool. 
White, you've heard things are so hot, they're white hot. White means hot. So you can see on the black shingle roof and the black metal roof, and they actually did two different black shingle roofs. They did one shingle roof that had one roof vent in it, another shingle roof that had two roof vents in it. So the one all the way to the right that has some white on it is black shingle with two vents in it. The one just past the red roof, the red shingle roof, is black shingle with one vent in it. And then the one that's really white is a black metal roof. You would never, ever, ever, ever put a black metal roof on your house. But some people have put green or blue or white metal roofs on their house and let them get black with algae mold, mildew, lichens, and bacteria. So how do we know just merely an algae stain could change the temperature of the attic of your home and affect your home cooling costs and your electric bill by as much as 40%. Well, here's the reason. If you look at this picture, all the way at the far left, you'll notice the window of the portable classroom building on the top picture. Below it, the window of the portable classroom building. It's showing in blue because the room's air conditioned and you're getting some cooling through the window. You'll notice just to the right of that window, is an electrical conduit on the wall. You can see that in the thermal photography picture. And just above that, up on the roof, is a plumbing stack or a plumbing flume. You can see that on the thermal photography. But you'll notice directly above the window in the regular photography picture, you'll see a black algae stain up on the roof. You can see that that tan shingle roof up there, that tan shingle roof, has an algae stain on it. If you come down below it in the thermal photography, what color is that algae stain showing up on the thermal photography? White, because it's hot. It's hot. So letting the algae mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria, fungus, darken your roof, grow on your roof, not only breaks it down because it's a decomposer, but it also absorbs more heat, and heat breaks down the roof either in the asphalt, in the asphalt shingles, or if you have a tile roof, it generally has an asphalt underlayment under it. So heat is a roof's enemy, and it's also your electric bill's enemy. Okay, so what color is your roof? And what color could it be? Is it an aesthetics question? Yes. Obviously, one roof looks better than the other. It is an aesthetics question, okay? But also, too, is this algae mold, mildew, lichens breaking down your roof? Yes. Is it costing you money on your electric bill? Yes. Do you think this homeowner realized a savings right away on their electric bill? You bet they did. In fact, in most cases, Roof cleaning is free. Once you've cleaned a roof and you follow the electric bills, the 12 months before cleaning that roof and the 12 months after cleaning that roof, the homeowner will usually get 100% of their money back from their roof cleaning within 12 months just in savings on their electric bill, which is really cool. All right, so again, here's another good picture. What color is your roof? This is a project that I did here in Orlando called the Towns of Southgate. The algae mold, mildew, and everything that was on this roof, this is a red or a kind of a terracotta colored barrel tile. You could take a quarter and scrape it down the roof and the algae would roll up in front of the quarter like black velvet. So you ready for this? It's a great picture. Here's your before, there's your after. So let me ask you a question. Do you think there was some energy savings there? Yeah. Now, if you're in other parts of the country, believe it or not, asphalt shingle roofs are very United States, very North American. Um, most other parts of the country are tile roofs. And I mean, not, most other parts of the world, I'm sorry, are tile roofs, especially in the UK and Western Europe. I see a lot of tile roofs when I'm out there. Many of those buildings don't have air conditioning. So during the summer, it gets stifling hot in some of those buildings. What we found is when we clean those buildings overseas, that the difference between the black roof and the clean roof is so significant 
that being inside those buildings during the summer, even though they're not air conditioned, becomes a lot more tolerable after they've had their roof cleaning. So although they may not see an appreciation on their electric bill, their comfort level will certainly go up. All right, also too, this stuff, this funk that's growing up on your roof, mold, mildew, fungus, and algae are all in the top 10 allergy irritants list. Mold and fungus are known culprits in sick building syndrome. And if you've ever heard of Legionnaire's disease, moldy areas around HVAC units or air conditioning units or the drip pans around those is what they look for in a Legionnaire's disease outbreak, which is a really bad respiratory infection that kills people. So your rooftop could be a gigantic Petri dish. Your roof and other areas of your home are just like a high school science experiment, growing cultures of bacteria and fungal stains that just might be dangerous to your health. And then they drain down, they get on your front stoop. You step on them as you're entering your house, you track them into your carpet, on your flooring, in and around your home. They get pulled into your ducting system, spread all around your home. You get that musty smell. That musty smell gets carried in from outside. Your roof is a rooftop Petri dish. You gotta clean it to get the funk off of it. And algae's like weeds. Listen, you must use a chemical that will kill the entire plant. You must break its bond on the surface. You must penetrate all the way down to the root. You must achieve 100% kill ratio to keep that weed from coming back. What product did I just describe? Roundup. Weed spray. They spent millions and millions and millions of dollars educating people that if you pull a weed from the ground and you don't get the root, what happens? The old weed just grows right back. If you pressure wash your algae and you don't get the root, the old weed just grows right back, right? So that's the pressure washing problem. Power washing away strips away the top of the algae bloom. The roots are still there within the surface that you're cleaning. And then power washing then blasts the spores deeper in the surface and spreads it around. Okay? So, this is a little thing I like to do with my customers. When you mow your grass on a regular basis, it grows back thicker and healthier. When you prune your hedges on a regular basis, they grow back thicker and healthier. When you power wash your algae on a regular basis, it grows back See what I'm saying? Use that on a customer sometime. Hey, you know when you mow your grass on a regular basis, it grows back thicker and healthier? When you prune your hedges on a regular basis, they grow back thicker and healthier. These are like, yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Yep, that's, that's common knowledge. When you power wash your algae on a regular basis, it grows back thicker and healthier. That's why pressure washing doesn't work when you're talking about living microbes. Dust, yes. Silt, yes. Loose or peeling paint, yes. But these regular maintenance cleanings for algae, mold, mildew, lichens, bacteria, funguses, no. It just gives it a haircut and spreads it around. So let's remember the four big reasons for soft washing, okay? Number one, it's an alternative to pressure washing. Pressure washing is not evil, certainly not, but this is an alternative to pressure washing. Soft washing is another tool for your arsenal you'll find you'll use it more and more and more and pressure washing less and less and less. It treats the infestation. It doesn't just clean it. Cleaning is a byproduct. It actually treats it. Which would you pay more for? Leather seat cleaning in your car or a leather seat treatment in your car? You have no damage that's typically associated with pressure washing, with soft washing. That's why we call it soft washing. And it's a more sustainable cleaning model than regular 
bothersome pressure washing. Hey, I hope you're learning a lot from the Certified Applicator Series. This is the real science and technology and the, and the why that you're cleaning these buildings above and beyond just aesthetics. Why we make the choices we do and the products we do and the mix ratios we do and the techniques we do for every different surface and substrate to attack the different staining concerns to make sure that we extend the life of those substrates, save the customers money, and keep them healthy. Hey guys, this is AC Lockyer. Thank you so much for checking out this, this little sample of some of the educational stuff that we have here at Soft Wash Systems to help you grow your cleaning and soft washing company. Really, this is just a small sample of the many, many classes, really now at this point in excess of 150 classes that we have to offer Soft Wash Systems. So you're probably wondering, what is my next step? Well, your next step is to come down and spend three days with us at a Discover Soft Wash Live event down here in Orlando, Florida. Or if you can't make one of our live events, we do simultaneously stream those in this era of COVID-19 so that we can, we can meet your needs. But hey, listen, if you liked what you just saw now, on this one hour class that we offered you, you'll love coming to one of our Discover Soft Washes, whether it's live in person here in Orlando, Florida, or via the web streaming live while we're doing the class here. We'll see you soon.